Hi, I'm Dr. Susan, and today our expert is Dr. Jamil Saj, and he is the founder of Jamil Saj Solutions. He's an international transformation coach and strategist. He has he's a master NLP, which is neuro linguistic programmer, and he does integrative naturopathic doctor. He is also the author of 20 Steps to Your Next Breakthrough. So he wears a lot of hats, but all completely integrated to really help you live up to your potential. He works with leaders and high performance uh, people, <laughs> entrepreneurs, business people, best-selling authors, athletes, and men like you that want to create an extraordinary life without regret. So welcome, Dr. Sayaj. Thank you so much, Susan. Really happy to be here, and thank you to the community for having me. Really, really excited to be with you today. Excellent, and thank you for your time as well. We're going to talk about a lot of the inner work that you do with people because it's very unique, your perspective. So how did your passion for helping people with their inner mental work kind of begin? Yeah, thank you. I'd be happy to share that. So for me, I think it really started when I was 19 years old, and that was the year that you know, my whole life changed and turned around in a really dramatic way. My father had a brain aneurysm, and for anyone who's not familiar with what that is, you just imagine one of the blood vessels in the brain, it's kind of like a tube, and it starts ballooning out. And if you're fortunate, you kind of have a bad headache, you go get it clipped at the hospital and you're good to go. But my father wasn't that fortunate, his ruptured. And now he has blood all over the brain. He's in a four hour brain surgery. And I just remember when he came out of it, we were told it was the worst aneurysm the neurosurgeon's ever seen. We were told the survival rate was less than 5%. And he survived the surgery. So already right there, it was a miracle, but he was in a coma. And I remember walking into the room and seeing him. And this was for me, you know, he was not just my dad, but he was just the epitome of what it meant to be a man for me. And I felt these two sensations in my body at that moment. One, I felt this deep sense of helplessness because I really felt like I couldn't do anything to help him. I wanted to do something and there's nothing I could do. And the second thing was I felt this profound sense of regret. I felt this feeling that I'd been taking my relationship with him for granted. I felt like I was thinking like most people, oh, you know, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. He was only 49 at the time. I have time. And that thinking brought me to this place of just regret of I might not have another opportunity to be with my dad. And fast forward over the next three years, he survived and we helped him make almost a full recovery. And he was like the walking miracle. Every time he came into the hospital, everyone had the greatest smile on their face. And after three years, he passed away. And in those three years, not only, you know, my hopes and my prayers were answered because I went from not really knowing him too well to him becoming one of my best friends and him, him and I spending 10, 15 hours a day together. But there was hardships too. I was one of his primary caregivers. I had myself tested in every way, my mental, emotional, my physical, my patience, my spiritual, everything. I just learned so many lessons in that time period about myself, about life, about how temporary it is, and that none of us know when our time comes, that tomorrow isn't promised, that it's a gift. And there's that quote by the Dalai Lama that I always remember that says, most people live as if they're never going to die, and then they die having never really lived. And I think about these moments I had with my dad and these lessons that I learned and waking up every day, not knowing if he was going to be there. And then when he was having such a profound sense of gratitude for that, you know, just waking up, the fact that you woke up every day, 150,000 people don't wake up. And if you woke up, you weren't one of them. If your loved ones woke up, even better. And the thing is, so many people that at least I've experienced in my life, they come at life with this perspective that something out of the ordinary needs to happen in order for them to feel good, in order for them to feel grateful, feel happy and loving. When you're the walking miracle already, there's already so many wonderful things happening in your life. And just that experience with my father woke me up. And I remember being at his wake and over 7,000 people came. It was a five hour wake. And almost everyone shook my hand and said, your dad saved my life. And my dad was a primary care doctor as well. And um, 
I noticed in that moment that I'd been playing small. I noticed in that moment that I cared so much about what other people thought about me. I was afraid of rejection. I didn't want to really shine my light and give my gifts to the world because what if people didn't like it? What if they didn't accept the real me? And in that moment, you know, he was 51 when he passed away and I was humbled at the impact that he had and that insight, that realization to me of enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of playing small and like kind of robbing the world of the gifts that I could bring. And we all have those gifts. We all have that light that we can share. And for me, that was kind of my waking up moment. And from that point on, you know, everything shifted. I've been really fortunate and blessed over the last 16 years going on now to really partner with people from around the world. People come to me with their biggest goals, their dreams, their challenges around their health, their business, their relationship, mindset, spirituality, happiness, and things of that nature. And we dive deep and I help them ch change the way they see their world. And when you see your world differently, your world changes because none of us see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. And so one way I love to explain the work, and it's you speak, I listen, we dance in conversation, and your life changes. And to me, nothing lights me up more than partnering with somebody and helping them unlock what's possible for them, unlock their full potential so they can create and experience the life that they desire. And that's just you know, what it's all about for me. So that's really interesting. I mean, I, I didn't know the story about your father, but that will really, uh, those profound moments change everything. And it's like, you know, when we spoke earlier, your story of your father and then how you are about playing small and hiding yourself, but it not only does you, you a disservice, but other people a disservice because you have so much to offer. And that kind of goes into the next question about, you know, standing in integrity and taking ownership of how we co-create our relationships, both the issues with the relationships, problems, the patterns, and that is so crucial. So can you tell us more about, about that and how owning and taking responsibility, standing in integrity really impacts our relationships? Yeah, I'd be happy to. One thing I want to make crystal clear because I think a lot of people they miss this part and it's so important everything in life is relationship it's you in relation to a person a thing an experience right so it's always you in relation to that thing so it's always relationship and relationship takes two whether it's two people two things you and a thing whatever it is it takes two and so everything in life is co-created so the question then becomes when you have a relationship, whether it's with yourself or you have a relationship with a partner or it's at work, business partner, friend, whatever it is, and you might think there's problems, there's challenges, they're doing certain things, you don't like it, and you, know, you might say, how do I stop that? But the real question really becomes, what role are you playing in creating that problem? Or what role are you playing in perpetuating that problem? You know, sometimes clients come to me and they'll say, you know, I've got this going on, that going on, this person's doing this, how do I stop that? Well, notice that that person's not on the call with us. So I can't control them and I can't control you, but you can control you. And so the question now becomes, what are the actions you're taking and what are the actions you're not taking? So your action and your inaction that either is fueling whatever is happening or allowing it to continue or perpetuating it. And when you can get clear on that, it's a massive shift because you start showing up thinking, wow, if everything's co-creation, it's like saying, I bring 50%, you bring, you bring 50%, that's the relationship. And if I am only putting it on you to change, all of a sudden, it's like, I'm not bringing in my 50%, but I'm expecting this 100% change. And it doesn't work that way. And so always ask yourself, how am I creating this? And when I ask that to a client, their ego doesn't like that. Their, their ego is like, what do you mean? I'm not creating that. It's their fault. It's their problem. They're the one doing the thing. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, whatever is in your life, you either are tolerating it, you're allowing it to continue, or you're doing something about it. And so when you recognize, I play a part, what role am I playing? All of a sudden, you take power back, and you're able to make meaningful actions to get where you want and to experience what you want to experience. Does that make sense? 
Oh, completely. I mean, you see it, I see it with patients of mine where they're talking about, you know, because I always talk about stress levels and of course relationships are a big part of stress, whether it's relationships with family members or, you know, partners, whatever it is. And there's so many times, I mean, you can see in the comments of my videos, just like, well, you know, my girlfriend doesn't care about this or my girlfriend does this, or I have always, you know, dating crazy girlfriends. I'm like, well, if you're always dating crazy girlfriends, maybe there's something that you're doing, yeah. you know, that's helping perpetuate this pattern and you have it shifted inside. But you see, you know, I've seen it with myself where, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I have to do everything myself. No one helps. I'm thinking, well, have I ever asked for help? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or yeah. have I ever presented it and allowed help? You know, it's like there's, you know, there, I see it all the time in myself, in patients, in different people. It's it's so much. Everything is a co-creation. You're absolutely yeah. right on. I'd love to expand on what you shared about. Let's say a guy who's listening to this he's thinking about something going on with his girlfriend or with his wife. And he's saying, you know, um, she doesn't treat me the way she used to. Let's say they've been together for a while. Well, we could keep it superficial at that level and say, yeah, you know, it's all her fault. And she just, she changed. But what if I were to ask you, you know, you've been together for, let's say five years, 10 years, 20 years, you've been together for a couple months, whatever it is, how have you changed? How have you shifted? How are you not treating her? the same way that she used to treat you. Because keeping in mind, everything we do, we do for a reason. And so when people in, everyone's got needs, we've got these emotional needs. And when you're filling up your partner's need, like think of it like a, like, a, like a gas tank or something, you're filling up the need and it's overflowing. When you're filling up that need and it's overflowing, they feel so loved and protected and nurtured and wanted and desired that they wanna give back to you. If they're not feeling that, if maybe it feels like they kind of shut down a little bit emotionally, if you ask yourself, how am I creating that? How am I potentially making this woman in my life that I care so much about not feel as wanted as I did before, not feeling as loved and safe as I did before? And then you think, oh, wow, maybe I've gotten a little bit too deep into my work. Maybe when I come home, I don't give her the attention that I used to. Maybe we don't share stories and laugh, and I don't show the interest that I used to. Mm -hmm. So now I'm taking back ownership of whatever I'm bringing to this relationship. And now if I change how I'm being, I shift. All of a sudden, I stand in my integrity. And we mentioned that earlier. Integrity to me, my definition, is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are all in alignment. Mm -hmm. And if I say that I love this person, I really care about this person, do my actions line with that or is it just talk? And if I can show up in my relationship as powerfully as possible, you know, a lot of people in general miss this key part of a relationship that courtship never ends. When you're just starting to date and there's that spark, there's that passion and everything feels so incredible. And you're like, this is the person for me. But then you get to know the person a little bit better and you recognize, you know, we all have our faults. We all have our kind of emotional baggage. We all have the stuff we've been through. And it's not about finding the perfect person because that doesn't exist, but finding the person is perfect for you. The person, there's an expression I remember hearing. It's not about finding the person with no baggage. It's finding the person who you're willing to help them unpack. <laughs> and so with that being said, here I am thinking, you know, I really love this person. And I'm saying even, you know, I love this person, but do my actions reflect that? And it's not if I think they do, does my partner think they do? Because if you and I are together and you don't feel loved, it doesn't matter if I think I'm like loving you because you don't feel it. So it's not landing in the same way as in communication. If I want to know if my communication is effective, it's your, you heard the message that I was conveying. Right. If I want to know if my love is being received, I need to give it in the way you want to experience it. And so if you're standing in your integrity, it's just such a powerful place to come from, to own the role you play in whatever the experience of your life is, your business, your relationship, your health, whatever it is, what am I not doing that I know I should be doing? What could I be doing better? And then all of a sudden your life starts changing because you're not waiting for external circumstances to change. You're changing first. And when you change first, your world changes. Yeah, totally. 
and like this kind of goes to like the next question I have for you and we could totally get on the tangent of like love languages and all that other stuff which we might circle back to but um that standing in integrity and having that integrity you know there's an aspect that comes up with blame and so how do you feel blame impacts your own personal growth and integrity in relationships i think blame is plays a massive part in your personal growth your relationships and think of it like this first when it comes to relationship if you come from a place of blame so you and i sit to have a conversation and i lead with you don't do this anymore it's your fault how's that going to make the other person feel they're going to get defensive and now you're going to get into an argument <laughs> and that and you know guys who are listening maybe your partner starts saying things to you and it feels like an emotional attack it feels like you always do this or you never do that and always and never pretty much never true <laughs> so you sit there thinking that's not true excuse me and then you get into an argument about it what i like to share with people before we get to the blame is it's not me versus you. It's you and me as a team versus the problem. So if I'm working with a couple and maybe we're doing some mediation, I'm helping them communicate better. You know, they're holding hands, they're sitting side by side, they're communicating in a way as us. It's not me versus you, because that creates that defensiveness. Right. And so that's kind of specific to a relationship. But when it comes to blame in general, blaming is not helpful ever. Because even if it is, quote unquote, somebody else's fault, like it's not you, it's still your fault about what you choose or not choose to do about it. I remember hearing this Bill Gates quote where he said something like, if you're born poor, it's not your fault. But if you die poor, that's your fault. <laughs> and it's like that type of mentality of, yes, there's people outside of you. Yeah, they act and they do things that are out of your control. But what is in your control? is how you choose to respond. What is in your control is what you choose to do about it. It's not helpful to blame because when you blame, you give your power away. When you blame, you're basically saying, you know, my life right now is bad for all these reasons and it's these people's fault and I need to wait until they change. I need to wait until they shift their behavior and do differently so that my life can get better. But what that does is it basically puts the ball in their court. It makes it so, you become a victim. This, I make a distinction between the victim mentality and the, and, the, and the creator mentality. The victim mentality for me is coming from the place of life happens to me. It's coming from this like, oppressive place that this person is thinking, why is it that the world is against me? And it's not a helpful thought process. The victim language might come from the place of, you know, we'll see. I'll try, maybe, I hope it works out, versus the creator perspective is coming from this place that everything is happening for me. Because maybe I'm dealing with a lot of hardship right now, but maybe I have a vision for my life, I have a goal, and that goal is gonna require me to get stronger, to get better, in order to actualize and realize that. Well, I can't do it as I am now, I need to go through challenge, I need to go through the hardship to grow. So that's one perspective. Language-wise, the creator is gonna think, Yes, I will. You can count on it. There's a level of commitment in their language, so they show up so much more powerfully. The creator doesn't choose to blame because they recognize what happened happened. We can argue about it and we can get into you know, a fight and get upset about it, or we can really get clear what is it that we both want going forward, or if it's just you, what is it that you want to experience right now? Given the current situation, what can you do about it? And I just find that so much more of a helpful place to come from when you're grounded in this aspect, this identity of being a creator, mm -hmm. and you don't point the finger. And you always say, everything is my fault. And it's not from an ego perspective like you're blaming yourself. It's not blame. It's taking responsibility. And when you say everything is my fault, that means I have 100% power and control over shifting my experience, over doing what I can in the moment to have a, a new experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about that taking responsibility and having the integrity. I mean, it takes integrity to take on a role other than that victim role. The victim role is easy. I mean, it's, it's yeah. one of those things where it's because everything else is everybody else's fault. I'm late yeah. for the bus, I'm late for this, or I have this, you know, it's, it's other, other, the world's fault. 
where being a creator, it's kind of like even our, you know, mistakes, it's like, I created that, I did that, but why, you know, and it takes you to that next level of thinking and being much more in that alignment with yourself and that responsibility and integrity. I really like, it makes perfect sense. It also goes perfectly with how I wanted to ask you about how. Could I add something before we go forward? I wanted to, you mentioned something that really sparked something in my mind that I wanted to share. This idea that when it comes to our emotions, you know, somebody might say, when they, if they're kind of in that blame mentality, mm -hmm. you made me feel angry. You made me upset. You made me feel depressed. You made me feel sad, whatever it is. And the truth of the matter, when you come from the place of a creator, when you don't point the finger and blame, no one can make you feel anything. Exactly. And the reason is because it is not actually possible because that's not how life works because emotions are an inside out phenomena. Mm -hmm. Emotions don't come from outside of you because they don't exist outside of you. There is no like happiness floating out there in the world that you get to grab on and experience. It comes from inside of you. And so this story that came to mind that I want to share real quick, imagine hypothetically, you're going to dinner with a friend mm -hmm. and your friend says, I'll pick you up at seven. And you're someone who really likes to be on time and you hate being late. And this friend has been late a couple times. In general, they're on time, but they've been late a few times and you don't like it and you've expressed that to them. So at 6.45, you're ready to go. You're early, you're ready. Seven o'clock rolls around, your friend's not there. So you think, oh, not this again. And now you get a little bit irritated. So you text them, hey, I'm ready, where are you? And they don't respond. Now it's like 7.10. So now you don't like being late. They're not answering. You call them. They don't answer their phone. Now you feel frustrated. And now you're thinking, you know, they don't respect my time. They don't respect me. Like I told them six times already that I don't like it when they do this. And now you're getting frustrated, getting irritated. Now it's like 7.30, half hour late. And now you're angry. Now you're really telling yourself all these stories and you're believing them about why you know they're not my friends anymore and all these kind of things then you get a message from a different friend and they say hey did you hear about you know so and so what happened to them and you sit there confused and you're like we're, we're, we're supposed to be getting dinner like what do you mean what happened to them they're in the hospital like they got into a car accident and then your mind automatically all of the anger completely goes away and now you're coming from this place of worry. And now you're driving to the hospital worried, I hope they're okay. And now you're thinking, oh my God, maybe there's some guilt because you're thinking they were coming to pick me up and you know, I could have driven, I could have met, I met them there. It's my fault. I hope they're all right, I hope they're not like dead. And then you get to the hospital and you see that they're okay. They're a little banged up, but they're okay. Now the fear turns into relief and then you start talking to them and they're actually okay enough that they're going to be able to go home in like an hour. And so you stay with them and then you start laughing, you're joking around. You, maybe you even joke about this misunderstanding and then you go home and now you're in a happier state. You're happy. So I want you to look at that chain of events. You went from frustration to happy and everything in between anger, irritation, fear, worry, relief, and none of it had anything to do with the outside world. All of that was based on stories you told yourself. First, you were frustrated because, you know, this is the third time this week. And then you were angry because they don't respect my time. They don't respect me, not my friends anymore. Then you were worried and feeling guilty because you thought it was your fault. Notice every time here, it's a thought that you tell yourself that you believe that creates the emotion from inside. Yeah. And, and then exactly you project it out. So much with people in daily life, they have their own story pre-made half the time before they, you know, realize the whole thing was happening. You know, someone's like, you know, oh, I've been in, you know, like, I don't know. People could say anything like you. Some people like say, oh, I'm a doctor. And people immediately like, oh, they're wealthy. They're this, they're this, they're this. And they have this whole story made up just from yeah. that one statement that could be true, not true or anything. Or uh, it's, it, we do it constantly and I, I see it constantly. And of course, 
I travel a lot and I have learned that is the worst mistake you can make with anything is to make anything up in your head because it's, it's a lot of times you're proven wrong and culturally so many things are different. If someone is reserved, it could be a cultural thing. It could be, uh, you know, a religious thing at the time. It could be whatever it is. You know, if someone doesn't shake your hand or smile at you, there could be a zillion reasons for it culturally or what's going on with them. It's, it's, you, you automatically get yourself into trouble when you prejudge any situation. <laughs> yeah, it's but, almost never the case. Yeah, your story is so accurate because I see it all the time with people creating so much emotional drama in relationships, any kind, even with themselves, with the stories that tell themselves, even just telling yourself, oh, I can't do this. And if you think back, you're like, wait a second, I have achieved this at one point. I have come, you know, done X, Y, or Z. And just because I failed that one time doesn't mean I can't do this, but you create all this fear, drama, concern. And I love that one quote where it's, you know, 10% of life is what happens and 90% of life is how you respond to it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I love that story. There's another story I read recently about basically, imagine you're in a boat and another boat hits you and you look down, the person was texting and you're, you're, you're furious. But imagine that same situation where there had been a storm the night before and there was a boat that just got un, unmoored and then hits you and you look down, there's no one in the boat and stuff. You know, it's, you can have a totally different emotional reaction even though the outcome is exactly the same. And yeah. sometimes when I, uh, you know, I've given some talks in the past around, about stress mm -hmm. and part of what I share is what you just talked about. This idea that stress is a response. It doesn't exist outside of you. Just mm -hmm. like it's an emotion, like you create it based on the meaning you give to the situation. So in your boat example, a boat hit your boat. That's a neutral experience. Now you create the story when you see the guy in the boat about what a careless guy he wasn't paying attention he disrespected my property and all this kind of stuff now you make it about you and you make it personal but if he really was looking down at his phone it's got nothing to do with you it still happened that he hit your boat and that sucks and you guys will work that out but the negative emotion and the stress doesn't have to be there like you bring that to the situation no yeah it's interesting so that kind of goes to where we're going before is like that you know your impact on the world, you know, how, how we show up in the world obviously impacts it. So talk about the importance of how we show up and how the world responds to us and how do you do that? So how it responds to us when we said everything is co-creation. So right. the question becomes, what version of you are you bringing to the party? How much you, in your case, you know, how much Susan shows up in her day-to-day -day life. You know, there's this expression that I remember hearing in music. It's like bodying a song. And there's this idea that I want you to imagine two different people, as I make like four fingers, right? Imagine two different people. And you've got the one person singing a song. They're on their phone. They've got the lyrics. And they've got a great voice. But they're just singing the song. Like, there's no connection to the song. There's not a lot of emotion in it. They're just singing the lyrics. And even though it sounds good, they're on key, all that kind of stuff, you're like, that was nice. But that was it, there's, no, there's nothing shifted in you. Just like with the boat example, another person singing the same song, but maybe they don't have the phone. And even if they did, it didn't matter. But let's say they didn't have the phone, they knew the words. And they were present as if like their spirit was coming out with every word they sang. And they just embodied that song as if they wrote it you know the emotions are flowing you get just mesmerized and you're just thinking wow tears start forming because it's just so freaking beautiful or maybe they're really soulful and you start moving your body and you're getting into it and you're like this is what i would pay to see like this is like an artist right here yeah. well they both sang the same song they both said the same words but it's how one showed up it's how much of one of these people they put into their craft. So when you think about your relationship, 
you know, specifically in this case, as a man, how much do you put into your relationship? How much of you do you bring to your partner at work? How much of you do you bring to the job with your mission, your vision, whatever that is that you define as that purpose that you live by? Do you show up 100%? Do you give it everything you've got? Or are you doing what I was doing when, when my dad passed and I had that realization that I was playing small? And that I was really fortunate that I had that realization young. But I know people that are 70 that still haven't had that, that insight. And so the thing is, I've asked clients in the past, how much of you, on a scale of let's say one to 100, how much of you are you really bringing? How hard are you trying? How much effort are you bringing forth? Are you giving it the best you've got? And they'll tell me, you know, I'm probably at like 70%, 75%. And two things about that. The first thing, why would you do that? Like, why would you operate as like, at like a C level? Like, why would you choose that? But second of all, we overestimate our own like ability. We overestimate typically where we're at. We always kind of grade ourselves higher. Because what I have found in my experience over the years, the people who tell me, I'm probably playing at about 70%. They're playing at about 20. 20%, 30%. And there's this expression, I believe it's a Navy SEAL quote. And it basically says, when you think that you've given it everything you've got, when you think that you've tried everything and you're exhausted, you're spent, you're at about 40%. There's a whole nother level that you could access if you pushed, if you went past what's comfortable, if you really showed up as if your life depended on it. Because it does. I said earlier that Dalai Lama quote, we all live like we're never going to die. And then we die having never really lived. So it's like, why are you showing up as if you're going to be here for a million more years? If you recognize that it doesn't, you know, both of us being physicians, you know, from a health perspective, it doesn't matter how healthy you are physically, how great you exercise. If the drunk driver comes out when you're running, who cares? Like it's, it, it's all for nothing. And so we want you to have the greatest, I want you to have quantity, longevity, but I also want you to have quality. Right. And you're living 80, 90, 100 years plus, but being miserable and looking back at your life and wondering, wow, I wish I could do that all over again. That doesn't help you. That doesn't serve you. That doesn't serve the world. You mentioned that earlier. You're robbing the world of the gifts that you have to bring, the uniqueness that you have to shine. And so how we show up, that is truly, truly everything. And I feel that, you know, that's a big part of the work that I do with people. This idea that we can't see our own blind spots. But when you're driving a car, you don't see your blind spot. You don't see outside of your own field of awareness. You kind of get lost in this limitation, the limited thinking, the beliefs that you get accustomed to, kind of the condition patterns that you talked about earlier. And all of a sudden, you know, you know what you know. And because you can't see outside the box, you can't see, it's like a horse with the blinders. They can only see straight. Mm -hmm. But if we have a conversation and we unlock that for you, and all of a sudden the blinders come off and you stop seeing in black and white, kind of like the Wizard of Oz in that one scene, she comes out and all this color's there. And it's like, it was always there. It was always available for you, but you didn't see it because you didn't step up fully. You didn't take responsibility for your life. You didn't commit. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that commitment is so important because it's not just, you know, you do what you say you're going to do. It's you commit to live a certain quality of life. You commit to a relationship. You commit to creating a business and whatever you're doing, a lifestyle for your family, whatever it is, when you commit and you show up fully, opportunities show up and it's just life works for you. But if you play that blame game, if you come from that victim mentality, if you never really commit out of fear, because what if it doesn't work out, then you're always kind of half-assing it. You're always barely putting yourself into it. And so you don't get results, you get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, you, doing like we are saying, like the blame game or the victim, you're blocking your whole expansion. Absolutely. And that expansion, you know, that's when you asked me the first question a while ago, when you said like, kind of what brought me into this line of work and why do I do it? And a big part of it that I recognized for myself is, you know, we all have our blind spots and I have them too. And when I was wanting to grow my business and I hired my coach, I just remember thinking, I hire this guy and really quickly, I start seeing things that I'd never seen before. 
And all of a sudden, this expansion made it so I started to thrive in a way that I hadn't before. And it was really interesting because before I hired my coach, I never had one. And there was this thought of, you know, things are going pretty well. I'm like surviving and I don't need the coach. But then I had the, the insight, you know, no one needs one. You want one if you want to thrive. I think about, you know, the top athletes and actors and actresses in the world, and they have multiple coaches and they're more skilled than their coach at whatever their like thing is. A basketball player is the best in the world. They're a better player than their coach, but their coach is able to see them in a way they can't see themselves. And that to me was the game changer. That was stepping into that creator mode, taking responsibility, saying, all right, this is where I want to be and I'm here. And I could trial and error my way through and maybe make it there in a decade or two, or I could get help and get there faster. And that to me was one of the best things I decided to do. And so when we talk about how we show up, show up in a way that serves you, show up committed, show up as the person who lives as their word. When you stand in that integrity, when you think and say and do, and it's all in alignment, you create such a beautiful relationship with your partner. You create so much success in your life. And it's just truly, as I'm mesmerizing before, that word came up again, to witness someone else live that kind of life. It's inspiring. Oh, and, you know, yeah. 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 It's amazing. It gets me fired up. <laughs> for, for a lot of people listening, like some of this might seem, seem really overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, you know, showing up with integrity and, taking on these responsibilities and changing and shifting it can seem you know like daunting because it's very nebulous it's like these these idealistic words so let's break it down like what are your top takeaways for our viewers to kind of to improve themselves and their well-being you know what are kind of breaking it down to the takeaway yeah. i think the first one is piggybacking on what we just said to making the choice to play all out and give your days everything you have. Keeping in mind, with, with self-compassion in mind, your best is different from day to day. You have days where you don't sleep as well, days where you get a little bit sick, you have days where things happen in your life, you have some tragedy. You're not gonna be able to operate at that same level of performance all the time, that's fine. But can you say, with full integrity and authenticity, I did my best, I gave my best shot. If you can, wonderful, you're gonna live a really beautiful life. And if you can't, wonderful, you have an opportunity now to step into that. Because think of it like the idea of a second chance, but it goes like into infinity. You, every moment is a second chance. Every moment is an opportunity to choose differently, to make the choice to say, I'm gonna live full out and I'm gonna stop treating my life like it's a rehearsal. This is the real thing. And so when you live like it's an accident, when you live without intention, when you live, excuse me, and it's not deliberate, then the results you get are random. The results you get are by accident. Things might go well occasionally, but it wasn't because of what you did, it was in spite of what you did. But if you come from the place of being intentional, this is what I want, and you work toward it, and you're deliberate, and you show up with the best of who you have, this is the kind of relationship I want. And I recognize that if I treat my partner, so I wanna bring this up, you come to a relationship to give. You don't come to a relationship to get. If you're coming to get, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. But if you come to give and you say, my goal in this relationship is to light my partner up and do everything I can to make them feel like a king or queen. And if that's what you're doing, they're gonna to wanna to do the same for you. But if you say, well, I'm gonna wait for them to do it to me first, then it's, it might happen, but it's unlikely. And so first takeaway is really show up fully and treat life like the real thing. Stop treating it like a rehearsal. The second thing is we talked about getting rid of blame. No more blame. Take responsibility for your life and making sure that when you can own the ownership aspect of this way of looking at life, saying everything's my fault, not because I'm to blame, but because I get to choose how to respond to it. If I don't like it, change it. And again, this is like, you know, this is real talk. And this is things that some people get uncomfortable with, like you might have mentioned, like you mentioned before, some people might feel it's overwhelming. Overwhelm happens when you're thinking about like the whole thing, the big picture. Kind of chunk that down into one thing. Where are you out of integrity right now? How could you keep your word a little bit more? And that really comes to my next thing, you know, be in integrity. 
honor your commitments. I find that most people, the number one person they break their promises to is themselves. They don't do what they said they were going to do. And so the thing is, when you do that once in a while, it might feel like an innocent little thing. Oh, you know, I said I was going to go work out. I said I was going to go to the bank. I said I was going to do this for my partner, but you didn't do it. But that adds up. And how we do one thing is typically how we do everything. It kind of shows up in multiple areas because it's a pattern of behavior. And so now if you're out of integrity in one area, oh yeah, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go for a run. And then five minutes before you're supposed to go, I don't feel like it. Well, all of a sudden, the next time you tell yourself, I'm going to do something, that little voice in your head is like, oh, like last time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you let yourself down. Your self-confidence drops. Your self-belief drops. As a man, it's like your word doesn't mean anything anymore. And that doesn't feel good. And so energetically, you want to make it simple. What's one thing right now you could be in more integrity with? What's one thing you could commit to and follow through? A simple way to put it is, do what you said you were going to do because you said you would. And that's it. And it's like in this life, it's like your word is everything. And especially in a relationship. I've heard, uh, I've had clients where, you know, let's say the house is a little bit messy and the partner says to them, hey, could you clean that up while I'm out? Sure, I'll do it. Then the partner comes back and the house is still messy and they get really upset. And the partner's like, what's the big deal? It's only a little bit of a mess because they're thinking it's just the mess. It's just this small little one-time thing. But their partner's like, this is the eighth time in a month you told me you were gonna do something and you didn't do it. So guys listening, it's almost never whatever is going on in the moment that your partner's upset about. It's maybe you've been out of integrity for a while. Energetically, they feel like they can't trust you. They feel like they can't count on you. And your partner wants that from you. And so when you stand in your power, you stand in your integrity, you take responsibility, you show up powerfully in any area of your life, it's going to bleed into the other areas. And you're, it's like that rising tide lifts all boats. Every area is going to dramatically improve. So I'd say those are the big takeaways for, for today. Yeah. I love that you brought up the kind of that breaking our promises to ourself is so important because it does carry through the rest of our life. And a lot of times we don't think it's such a big deal. Like, oh, I was going to, you know, do my smoothies for breakfast or go for a run or, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I still ate healthy or I still, but it does, it affects our own, like, I see people go more into a, a sad or depressed state easily with the more they're breaking their stuff to themselves. And it affects how they show up in the world. And so I'm glad you brought that up because that is important. Thank you. Well, speaking of all of this and putting it together and chunking it down, if anybody would like to work with you, and I know for, for my people on this channel and in my men's group, you're offering a freedom expansion call. Tell us more about that in your own words because I could blab on about it, but I think it's going to be better coming from you about this call that you're offering complimentary to the viewers. I'd love to. Thank you for the opportunity to bring it up. And so, you know, speaking directly to you who's watching this, if something resonated with you here today, if there's something coming up in you saying, yeah, you know, I'm not operating at 100%. I am acting out of fear at times, even if I deny it. It might be a little uncomfortable to acknowledge that. But yeah, you know, I'm, I am playing small. I don't have the results in my life that I would like to have. When I think of freedom expansion, you know, to me, it's what it's all about. Because that sense of freedom to be who you truly are, to live the life you want to live, that's the ultimate freedom, those things. And if you feel constricted in any way, you're not living that life that you could be living. And so if this has resonated with you, I'd love to have a conversation with you. And on this call, we get really clear, first of all, on what it is that you want in your life. And a lot of people take that as a superficial thing. Oh, you know, I want this. It's so much deeper when you've got somebody to really hold you to that and get clear on what would that be like for you? And is that what you really want? Or is that kind of what you think you can have given this limited perspective that you have? oh, I, I want to make six figures. What would seven be like? And all of a sudden, you don't think, you know, seven's even possible for you, but not because it's not, but because the way you see it. So it's what is it that you want? 
in your relationships, in your mindset, your business, whatever it is, then why do you want it? And really connect some emotion to that. Because it's really easy to say, well, I want it for this reason. Reason is more like logical. But when you connect to your heart with it, now you've got this emotional pull that that's going to dramatically increase the likelihood you're going to even get it because there's momentum behind it. And then what's the block? What's the constriction, the hurdle? Why don't you have it? Why isn't it in your life? And th this is an interesting one too. People don't know. They think they know because if you knew what it was and you got rid of it, you'd have it, whatever it is that you want. But whatever you don't have, you don't have it for a reason. And it comes back to how you show up, how you're being. There's something you're not seeing in your world that's creating this blockage, the results that you're getting. And so we figure, what that out, figure out what that is and we come up with a plan to get you what you want. And that process is what I call a freedom expansion call. And I'd love to offer that to anyone who's interested. Uh, Susan has the link for, you know, to book that call. You can go on my website, jamilsayage.com, and you'd find it there as well. And yeah, it's just really been such a pleasure to be with you all and to be in conversation about it. Well, thank you so much. And I will, um, all the links are in the description below. You can just click on them, head to Jamil's website and sign up. There's lots to learn and there's always stuff we can improve on. I feel like the more you start really looking inward, the more things you can clear that are just blocking you from, from living an exceptional life. That's kind of one of those things that we don't even realize our potential half the time until we start playing with this and really working. And one thing you just said that brought a quote up to my mind. This was a quote when I was in med school, I had this on a whiteboard and I, there was three quotes, but one I'll share and I lived by it every day. And the first one was, do something today your future self will thank you for. And I thought about that every day. And it's like, there were things that I was uncertain about, things that I was afraid about, but I wanted to do it. And something about it called to me and I thought about it and I was like, well, if I did it and it went really well and it made a big impact in my life, what would that do? You know, for me, it was when I first met my girlfriend. And I remember I was nervous to ask her out and I was afraid to even go like really, you know, connect with her, you know, and I, then the stories, you know, maybe she has, you know, she got a boyfriend, of course, and all this and all this. And, you know, she wouldn't go for someone like me. And I really kind of went into the future and I imagined what life could be like if I took a chance on that. What if she said yes? What if it went really well? What if we had this incredible relationship for the rest of our life and what that would look like. And when I really felt that emotion, it was like the scales tipped where it was like, there is no reason not to try because worst case she says no. <laughs> worst case, my life stays the same. Best case, I go on this adventure of a lifetime and everything's amazing. So in the same way, if somebody, if this has resonated with somebody, worst case, you leave the call with a beautiful plan of how to move forward. Best case, your life changes dramatically in a beautiful way exactly there is nothing to lose that's like that well if you enjoyed this click the links below to get in touch with dr Saich and subscribe to this channel i'm going to have much more information i'm hoping to have dr Saich back for more on relationships and inner work and all sorts of great stuff like that that can really help improve your life significantly and Click subscribe and we'll have him back. Just give us some good feedback and look forward to having you guys, having you back. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. Bye.